In this video, I'll give you an introduction to using Figma as a web developer. Now, I'm going to assume that you have the basics under control, and what we will cover is five crucial ideas that if you understand these, you can kind of get rid of a lot of the frustration of working with Figma. We'll look at layouts, styles, constraints in working with text, frames and auto layouts, and then components. And believe it or not, as a web developer, you have a leg up on designers because all five of these concepts have ties to CSS. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of how to use Figma. Really what this is meant for is web developers who are constantly in Figma and constantly frustrated by it. And that's where I found myself. So I started just trying to learn it more so that I wouldn't be so annoyed when I was trying to work with design files and things like that. So I'm going to assume that you've gone ahead and downloaded it, that you know the very basics of kind of working with text blocks and how to drag out shapes and that kind of stuff. You understand how layers work in the side panel. So some of those basics I'm not going to cover here, but I will link multiple videos that I found super helpful when it comes to just covering the UI and kind of how you do basic things in Figma. What we're going to work on really is how all the different pieces work together so that as you're working as a web developer, it's not frustrating for you if you're building out things for a client because a lot of us have to do a lot more design work than we're probably comfortable with, but having just a sense of how to use these tools will make that frustration go away and you'll actually be able to enjoy uh, working in Figma. Now, a couple of quick notes. First of all, we're gonna do this in two basic stages. We will go over the five principles kind of just in theory as we build out a style guide. And then the second half of the video will actually fully build out this responsive landing page. And if you keep watching till the very end, I've actually got a slight surprise for all the web developers out there where we'll get to build this thing out and I'll tell you about that. Now, lastly, before we jump in, let me just make note of two things. Number one, if you hit Command P while you're in Figma, you can quickly search any command. So if I say like flip horizontal or flip vertical, I don't have to remember those. They will give me the keyboard shortcuts there, but you can see just typing gives me access to that. Or I can come in here and look for like icons and see any icons that I have uh, plugins for. So that's one really quick thing. And if you're used to working in VS Code or any other web development environment, you're used to those kinds of hotkeys. So Command P will help you out there. The other thing to note is when it comes to keyboard shortcuts, there's actually a nice helpful menu down here. If you click here and just click keyboard shortcuts, it will open up a bunch of different options. Anything that you've chosen to use before will show highlighted. Anything you haven't will not be. At least I think that's how it works. So you can see here, I have not used the arrow tool, but I've used all of these before in Figma. Um, so this is a super helpful way to kind of just make sure you know how to interact with the interface. I won't be going over that today. Again, I want to focus on these five kind of crucial, more overarching ideas that if you understand, will take away the frustration. All right, enough Gavin, let's jump right in. All right, I've got a blank Figma file open here, and you can see here that I've done one special thing that is new to Figma, and that is that if you come and click this little Figma sign right here and go to your preferences, you can choose a theme that is dark mode. So if you like that, uh, that'll help you design with less strain on your eyes, or maybe it's just a preference. Uh, but either way, what I'm going to do is just walk you through the five steps that I mentioned up front, that if you understand these five things, I think it'll give you a basic grasp of Figma from a developer standpoint. Now, believe it or not, I think web developers actually have a leg up on designers when it comes to working with layouts in Figma because it borrows a lot of the same thinking from CSS. So we're going to get started with that. But why don't we start just by drawing out a frame. And across the top here, you can see there's a bunch of tools you can use. Uh, a frame tool is going to be really, really important. You can notice when I click here, I'm going to have a bunch of options here. And uh, they give me some default options. So let's go ahead and choose one of these uh, that we might choose as a default. So I'll choose this 13 Pro. And as you can see, to start with, I've got this bright white background. We'll change that in a second. What I do want to point out is that whenever you have a frame selected and you can see all your layers over this way, you can see that over here, you have access to what's called a layout grid. So I click this here, it's going to give me a grid. And by default, it's 10 by 10 pixels. But if I click in here, I can choose between a grid or between columns or rows. So let's let's do this. Let's start with a, an eight point grid. So this is like a material UI a starting point. And then I can add another grid here. And for this one, let's go ahead and change this to columns. And for something small like a mobile here, we might set this to like four columns. And you can set how this stretches or interacts. You can set different margin, uh, the gutter for each of these. But for now, I'm going to leave those alone. Now, if you ever want to toggle those off, you can hit Control uh, G and it will toggle those off. And then once again, toggle them back on. And that way, as you design and snap things to that, they don't have to always be there and present. So that's the first thing is that layout's grid. 
Secondly, you can set up styles that by default will basically be accessible all throughout your build. And that will help you stay more consistent and even better when your client comes to you and says, hey, I want this color changed. You don't have to go find it all throughout your project. You change it in one area and everything will be set automatically. So let's go ahead and start with colors because I think that's probably the easiest to understand. If I come up here, I've got a bunch of these tools. You can eventually memorize these keyboard shortcuts, but clicking is just fine to start with. If you hold down shift whenever you're dragging out one of these, it will keep a perfect aspect ratio. Otherwise, you get this kind of wonky thing going on. So let's go ahead and set this, and you don't have to have circles or anything like this laid out to start with, but I think it's a helpful way to understand what's going on. So what I'm going to do is come in here, and I'm going to change this fill color, first of all, to my dark color I want this to be. So this is like almost a black color, and maybe let's pull it over here just so you can see more what's going on, and toggle off that grid so that it uh, looks more like how it will in the end. Now what I'm going to do is click these little four dots. What I'm essentially doing is setting up a style uh, palette. So if I click this, I'm going to now click the plus button. And in here, I can name this whatever I want. So let's call this background, and I'll hit create style. Now if I click off and just click anywhere in the main document, you'll see that any styles I've created now show over here on the right. So let's go ahead and create several more so that we've got all the colors we're going to need, and we can access them from this right-hand sidebar whenever we need them. So I'm going to click here and drag this out. If you just click something and hold down the Option key uh, or the Alt key, I believe it is on Windows, it'll duplicate a layer. So I'll go ahead and do that, and I'll do this a couple more times, not really paying super close attention to spacing. All right, so for each of these, what I'm going to do is click in here, first of all, and decouple this instance or detach the style. So basically, this makes it just a normal color. It's no longer attached to the style of that dark background. I'm going to go ahead and then add each of these background colors. And for each of them, do the exact same thing we did a second ago. So let's call this something like, uh, we'll call this text. That should work. Come over here. We'll do the same thing, detach. And I'll go ahead and add another color. This is that green accent color. Click here again hit the plus button, and call this accent. I've got another one here, detach again, and I'll do these two quickly and be right back with you. All right, I've got those five set, and you can notice that on this last one, if I click here and click into the accent semi, and then go to change it, so this is changing the global style. If I click edit, you'll notice that what I've done is I've taken the properties of this one right here, and then I've just reduced it to 10% opacity. Now, whenever you're doing that, you can come in here and actually choose between local colors or personal colors or document colors. Document colors are anything in the document. Local colors are basically your local styles. So all I had to do is copy this here, come in here and then change this to 10% and then uh, click here and uh, resave it as a new style. So that's what I've done. Now I've got these five styles. So I'm going to go ahead and drag them out this way and let's go ahead and hit shift A. That will give us an auto layout, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, let's set the background here and this shows you how to, you can actually use these styles. So I'm going to come in here and rather than click this plus icon or anything like that, I'm going to access my global styles. So I'll click here and notice at the very top, I've got access to those five different colors. So let's go ahead and set it to something like this, which of course hides that, that white. Um, and then we'll move this all to the middle. And again, I'll show you about auto layouts in just a second. So this means that all my colors are right inside here. Even though I can't quite see this one, I'm going to be just fine. We'll grab all this and let's rename this frame. We'll call it something like uh, colors. All right, so I'll click out here. You don't have to necessarily do this. I just like to go to a place and then click and then come in here and change these if I need to for any reason. Uh, so that's how I like to do it. You can also just come in here and click this and then update the properties themselves. So here's how it would work. Uh, you set everything in your document, which we'll do all throughout the project uh, by coming here and selecting one of your uh, global styles rather than typing it in manually or using like the color picker. Then whenever you want to update any of these, let's say I come to this accent and I say, hey, instead of this, let's go ahead and change it to something else. Let's change it to like an ugly yellow color. <laughs> all right, there it is. And it automatically updates anywhere I've used that instance. So I'm going to go ahead and reverse that, come in here. And now let's change the white. And remember, I've used the white on this circle, which I used to kind of set it originally, although I didn't need to necessarily. And then I've also set it as the background color here. So if I change it, both of those should change. So as I move this, you'll notice that that's exactly what happens. Both this and this change because they're both referencing that global style. Now I could even come in here and delete this and delete that, and I've still got my global style. So you don't need those necessarily. I just like to have somewhere that kind of uh, holds them for me mentally.
So we've talked about layouts and we've now talked about styles. Now you don't, you're not just limited to color styles. You can actually have text styles as well. And I'll come up here and hit the text uh, button. You can also hit T and get access to that as well. And if I start typing, I could say like uh, heading one or something like that. Now let's zoom in. I can scroll with my mouse wheel, mouse wheel while holding command. And that will scroll me right in. And then I can change the text here and I have access to any fonts in Google. So let's go ahead and just grab something called outfit. And then I'm going to change this to bold and let's set this to something wild like 120. Now over here, I've got some other options here. This is my line height. And what you can do in here is say like 120 times 1.1 or something like that. And it'll actually set it to 1.1. In this case, that would be 132. So I know I want my headings to be something like that. So that should work for me. And then I might come in here and change a couple of the things like set this to two. With any of these, you can, you see how your cursor changes. You can actually drag this out to if you'd prefer to do that. Um, so we'll get that all set up like that. Then what I'll do is do the same thing. I'll click this four dot, click the plus button and give this the title. I'll call it H1 uh, header text and create the style. Let's click this and hold the option or alt key and drag another instance and then, or, or just copy it. And then I'll grab heading two here and we'll change this up again. Once again, I will detach the instance that I already had, and I'll change this to something else. So I'll change it to like 73. And notice this auto height did not update because it was set using a calculation and then kind of hard coded. So what I could do instead is come in here and say like 101% in this case. And now if I were to change this to something like 100 or whatever, it'll actually update automatically for me. So that's what I'm going to do in this case. I'll set it to 73, and then let's come in here and let's change this to 3. All right, once again, click here. And then I'll say H2 uh, header text. So I'm going to do that for the rest of my styles, and I'll be right back with you. All right, so I've just finished all of these. You see I've got headings one through four, then a subtitle, a subtitle small, body large, and just body text. Now, a couple things here. Note that uh, I came in here on this one. In fact, let's just come over here so we can just click the, the artboard and see exactly what we did. On both these subtitles, I actually added this capitalized case. So everything will be uppercase, not capitalized, um, the whole way, anytime I have this style selected. So it works very much like styles in like Microsoft Word or something like that, where now these styles will work for everything. Now, one other thing to note is that these are not using the actual color. So if I set these to specific colors, those will not track across. There might be a way to do that, but I don't know what it is. Um, but let's go ahead and grab all these. You'll notice something interesting here. I've got both my white, which is that color I actually created and set to white. And then I've got FFF, FFF, which is the same exact thing. But if I ever wanted to change this, I'd want to make sure that everything in my document updated. So at any point, if you're not sure if you've actually always used your colors or not, you can come in here and select everything in your document or hit Command A, and then just looked at any kind of styles that have been selected. And you can see that all of these styles are using things I've already preset except for this one. So that means I can come in here and click this four dots and say, hey, make sure I use this white as well, which means now each of these are also using the white. Now, again, they don't super matter because these are not tied to the text itself. And again, you don't need these. So if I go ahead and delete these right here, I'll still have all those textiles, but I just like have to some like to have some kind of visual representation of these. So that's number two, uh, layouts and then styles. Now this next one won't take as long, but it is super, super important. And that is working with constraints and then how text interacts with its text box. So let's come over here and what I'm gonna do is just, let's just drag this one over and I'll just hold option to move it over this way. And then I'm gonna select a new color using one of those five I set up to start with. All right, and uh, you know what, let's do, let's go ahead and change this too. So I'll change the color and let's change this to something like just the body. All right, so here it is. And by default, let's say I put it right in the middle, something like that. And you can see I've got these little snapping lines to show me that. If I look over here, whenever I've got text or anything selected, you'll see I have a little constraints thing. Now what's this saying is that it's trying to keep it to the top and to the left. And in fact, I've got these blue dotted lines to indicate that. If I come over here though, if I start to stretch this artboard itself, which is what this frame is, um, it's like an artboard except with superpowers. If I start to stretch this, it tries to stay on the left and the top. So it's not quite staying to the center. So what I want to do is actually set the constraints exactly to the middle like this. And that means actually let's do top and center left to right. And that means as I were to drag this and move this over this way, it's now going to stay tacked to the top there while also staying exactly in the middle of its parent frame. So that's really important when it comes to responsive design in Figma to make sure that you actually have that set up to start with. So that as you stretch and move and copy things over to new canvases, that they will be responsive as you'd expect. So I'm going to go ahead and move that back, hitting Command Z and come back in here. And we'll also look at a couple of other body uh, font things. 
Now, sometimes you'll actually be moving a text box and you try to resize it like this and you expect the font to kind of resize with you, but it, it doesn't work like that. So let me go ahead and first of all, let's just attach this instance so you'll see how you'll typically see it, which is you've got this fixed size, auto height, and auto width buttons. Now, if I click auto width, it's just going to set it to snap to however big that text um, thing is. So if I come in here and start typing, it'll just expand with it. Same thing goes for auto height. It'll just wrap around as I need it to. I can smash this, and even as I move it, it will just wrap that text down below. If instead you have a fixed and you start to move it like this, you'll notice that it does try to respect that, but it's not going to automatically snap to it or anything like that up and down. Whereas if I click this, now it actually does up and down. And if I click this, and now it does uh, left to right, so it tries to fit it all here on one line. So with constraints, that works for everything. This kind of a line or this uh, fixed width and height and all this kind of stuff is mostly just about text. Uh, so that will help you kind of know how to interact with those. So that's the third thing, constraints and working with text. Now, the next important feature to understand is frames uh, and really the, the kind of superpower of frames, which is auto layouts. So let's say I grab these right here. And what I've already done is put them inside an auto layout. In fact, you'll notice that there's a little icon shift here that's different than a typical frame. Now, frames are cool. They give you lots of superpowers, but auto uh, layouts are even better. The way to think about auto layouts is it's like flex without the wrapping capabilities. So as soon as I add all these to a parent flex container, now the parent essentially is going to control the spacing between all of them. So I guess I should say that it's like flex if gap was perfectly supported for the last 10 years and you could always use it. So here I am, I come in here and you'll notice that I've got these little indicators that I can start to drag. And these are basically the parent gaps between these. Now, if you don't want to do something visually like this in the GUI, you can come over here and just set it to something like 20. Now notice as well that I actually put this all to the center. So this is like align item center and justify content center. But I could move it to the top left, top, uh, center or bottom center, whatever I want. Now I can also come in here and with a little bit more advanced features, I can come in here and space it out. So like space between. And again, you can see how that feels very, very much like Flexbox. I'm basically saying justify content space between, and that will try to push it to the sides. And this will be auto for all of these. So uh, these are super helpful and I'll use them all throughout. Essentially, it works like a one dimensional flex row without any kind of wrapping capabilities. Now you can also switch it to flex column. So if I grab this entire frame and go like this, now it switches to flex column. Now, because the way I set this thing up, uh, it's not going to snap the background to it, but you can see how all the children snap just up and down, just like you'd expect. All right, now it's time for the fifth and final step that I think if you understand it will help you kind of use Figma to its fullest, and that is components. Now, again, as a web developer, I think you've got a leg up here because we use components all the time, and uh, you can pass in props and all that kind of stuff, and that's what we're going to get the ability to do here. So let me go ahead and delete this frame here. Actually, maybe what I should do is just resize it because what we're going to do is create a button. So let me come over here, and the first thing I'm going to do is hit Command A, or Shift A rather. This turns this again into an auto layout, and you can see the icon has changed. Now I can click the text inside here, and it auto resizes. And let's just start typing, so I'll say like text here or something like that. Now notice that this text itself is already taking on this subtitle. That's what I want it to do, but I could change it to something else. Um, uh, but let's keep it at subtitle, because I think that's actually what I want my button text to read. Now that I've got this set here, let me go ahead and change the color here. The fill, uh, actually, let's leave that text alone. Let me change the fill of the frame over here. And let's change this fill to this color. We'll keep the text color just like that. Uh, we will update a couple other things. Let's give this a big border radius. And we'll give this more padding, like 35 uh, side to side, and maybe like 18 up and down. And that should work just fine. Okay, so the way components work is you can create a component and then you can add different variants, but you also have an additional way to essentially pass in props uh, for Booleans, for text, and for instance swaps. So things you want to pass in uh, and maybe switch whether or not which item shows, like an icon, for instance. So let's start by just selecting the frame itself, and then we're going to come up here and click Create Component. So here it is right here, and uh, we've got a component. Let's rename it to something legible like uh, button. And uh, now what we can do is basically grab an instance of this whenever we want it. 
So you can go to the master here, the main, and you can hold down the option key and drag out. And now you can see that this doesn't have a little icon like this showing you that it's connected because it's got this purple uh, outline to a component, but it's just an instance of that component. That means if I come in here and change this, nothing's going to change. However, if I come up here and change this to text, uh, anything that references this component like an instance is going to update. All right, so let's talk about how you might customize this. Well, to start with, uh, let's see. Let's say we want some icons. Now I'm going to hit Command P to open the Command Palette, which is very useful in Figma. And I can search for plugins or menus or commands. In this case, uh, I know that there's a plugin that gives me access to a bunch of icons. So that's called Phosphor Icons. Let's pull this up, and I'm going to change this over to bold and search for like a map. And so let's grab this. Uh, I also am going to want some kind of mail. Let's choose this uh, airplane icon. And then next, I want some arrows. I'm not going to use that in this button, but I might use that later. Uh, in fact, I know I will. So I'm going to grab all those, and let's close that down. So these are different things I've got here. And what I can do is just for each of these, uh, let's grab all these, and this time hit Create Multiple Components. And we'll just call them all whatever they are. So now these are their own components, but I can now reference these in other places if I want. So you can do this in kind of two ways. Let's first of all think about different states we might want. So what I'm going to do is select this component here first, and I'm going to click this button up here which says Add Variant. Now once I do that, it gives me this dotted box showing me that these are two different variants of the same component. This is like the master, and I'm basically saying, hey, there's two different options that I might call for when I use this button component. And you'll notice that I've got this current variant property name right here. So let's go ahead and change this up just a touch. I'm going to grab this and scroll down here. Let's go ahead and remove the accent, or maybe let's set it to just dark color, and then add a stroke, again, using those four dots. And let's make it a little bit wider. And uh, let's see what else we might want to do. Change this fill uh, to this color. And while I'm at it, I'll change this to my actual dark color as well. So now you can see I've got like a primary and maybe a secondary button. So let's select the entire thing here, this outline. And I'm going to change this property name to be something like type. And then I'll set this here to my primary. And I'll set this to my secondary. Now you can see if I go ahead and grab one of these and hold down the option and drag it out. Now I can just switch between these two and I'm basically saying, hey, I want this component, but I want to be able to select which kind of, which type of component I want from that set. Now another quick way to do that is to hit Shift I and that will pull up any possible components you have and then you can just drag that right out or you can come in here to your assets panel and do the exact same thing. So there's a bunch of ways to access these components, uh, but the nice thing is you have one master and that would live wherever this uh, large thing is here. In fact, when you drag these out, if you're not sure where that's at, this button right here will always bring you right back to it. So you can always customize it uh, at kind of the, the parent level if you need to. All right, so this is kind of how to create variants. Now what we want to do is essentially pass props to it. And this is new in Figma, the way you can do this. Uh, what we're going to do is select one of the things. And in this case, it's this text uh, right here. Now, both of these buttons have a text layer, of course. What I want to do is let's go ahead and select the main button itself. And what I want to do is come over here and click on this uh, properties. Now, I can add a new variant if I want. But in this case, what I want to actually do is, is use the text variant. And this essentially is like um, a props for text. So I'm going to click that right here. And we'll just call this something like uh, label. And then by default, I'll say like button text. And create that property right here. OK, cool. So what I can do now is select this and select this. And on both of these, not in the layer, because this controls whether or not it's visible. I'll show you that in a second. But in this content, I'm going to click this button right here and attach it to that label. Same thing here. Let's grab this and attach it to that label right here. All right, let me go ahead and give myself a little bit more room here. Drag this out. Okay, so that's my button text. Now, if I were to go ahead and grab that button instance and grab it out this way, you'll notice that essentially I can pass in a prop. So over here, I can change this button text for this instance to see something like hi or whatever, and it will update there. So of course, you can just click in here and update it as well, but this gives you kind of one uh, section over here underneath the instance to control everything about it, the type and the label and everything else. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. In addition to essentially passing props of text, you can also pa pass props of whether or not something is visible. This basically shows it or hides it, so adds it or removes it.
So in this case, what I'm going to do is actually drag in this. I'm going to hold down the option so that I'm just using an instance of this component. And I'm going to drag it in there. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. So now both of these have these. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and update uh, this to this accent color. Uh, but other than that, those will all be the same. Again, I need a little bit more room. So let me drag this out, drag this over this way. And uh, let's talk about the visibility of this exact thing. Now in this case, both of these have an icon, and you can see that I've got this little target to select both of those together. And now I've got a couple different options. You see I've got that same icon here. In this case, I've got an opportunity to add a swap property, which we'll talk about in a second. And then I've also got the ability to apply a Boolean property, and this is on the layer, whether or not it's visible. So I'm gonna click this first of all, and set basically uh, icon visible or something like that. And by default, I'll set it to true. And once again, if I were to grab an instance of this and drag it out this way, now I can set whether or not the icon is visible and it just hides it or removes it just like that, which is pretty cool. Uh, the other thing I can do if I select this again and then click this uh, target to select both of those in the component set. Now, in addition to the layer, which you can now see shows, I can now come in here and apply an instance swap property. So if I click this, this is basically going to say the icon type right here. By default, it's saying, hey, set it to whatever it is by default. That's just fine. Now what I can do, again, I'll just copy it out this time by holding out the option and clicking, is I can come over here and say whether or not the icon is visible. Once it's visible, I can click the icon type and then basically look at any kind of component I have. So I could switch it out for this paper airplane. Um, and so I'm swapping that out, essentially passing in a different prop to the button itself. So hopefully that makes sense. And again, I think as a developer, you have a leg up because you're used to passing in props. And uh, hopefully that makes sense as you set this up. So now essentially with these two buttons, I now have access to any button with or without an icon, with any icon that I have, whether or not it's a type of primary or secondary. All right, so let's do the exact same thing. I'm gonna come down here. In addition to this button, we're now gonna create one more thing. I'll click the frame and this will be an arrow icon. So let's call this uh, arrow and I'll come down here. And what we're gonna do is have two states. We'll have an active state and a, an inactive state. Maybe I'll just have that as a Boolean. So let me show you how that works too. So let's grab this. And the first thing I'm gonna do is, let's add this as a fill. I'm gonna, um, again, make this super round. Hit Shift A to make this uh, an auto layout, which is important. And then set everything into the very center. And then what I want to do is drag in an icon. So let's use this one right here. I'm going to copy that instance over here. So now I've got this uh, icon that's pointing to the right with an active state. I'm going to go ahead and hold down the option and again drag out to give me another one. And in this case, all I'm going to do is switch out this background here for my transparent. Now with both of these set, and actually let's go ahead and set this color as well. We'll set this to this bright color and this one we will set uh, to this dark color. Let's grab both of these. And now that I've set two different auto layouts, what I can do is come up here and this time say create components set, which wraps both of these and already sets this up as having two different variants. And that's what I want. So let's select this first one. And let's see this property here. Actually, let's come back out here and rename that property. We'll call this something like uh, disabled. And in this case, what I want is for the default to be uh, here, we'll set this to true. Uh, false, sorry, uh, that's false, and then this one will be my true. All right, so this is a different variant, but it's gonna show up very similarly to some of the other things we did up top here. So if I drag this out again, holding option, now I've got an instance, and now I've got a toggle just like up top, but this is toggling variants rather than essentially passing in props of but whether or not it's visible. So hopefully that distinction makes sense. You can have uh, variants that you can switch between whether through toggles or drop downs and then you also have the text the instance swap and uh, essentially a, a visibility boolean uh, showing so let me grab all these if this doesn't totally make sense that's fine i'm just now <laughs> kind of getting my mind around it uh, like i said this is a little bit more of an advanced feature so i'm going to grab both of these now what i want to do is grab this icon and click this target again and on both of these I'm going to not toggle, toggle whether or not it's visible, that's the Boolean on the layer, but do this instance swap. So I'm going to click this and we'll say icon and create property. 
So now what this means is I can drag this out just like we did with this icon. Now I've got a disabled state, whether or not it's disabled, and then I've also got an icon I can choose. In this case, I might choose like the left one and then set it to disabled or uh, unabled or whatever, <laughs> or enabled. So now I've got both of these, essentially four different variants just by setting up these two. So hopefully that overview of components is helpful for you. You can see how setting up a design system like this makes it way quicker to build out a page because you can just very quickly, uh, you know, drag all these out and set it up however you want. All right, so that was a lot to cover, but I think those five things are kind of fundamental building blocks of Figma. Of course, there's tools and stuff like that you need to know. And of course, when you select colors, you need to realize how to like change colors here and center it and stuff like that. But I think these five are kind of the fundamental things that it's easy to overlook while you're just trying to set colors and stuff like that. These are the five that frustrate me the most as a developer. And once I wrapped my mind around them, at least I think I have, that was super helpful for me. All right, so with those five principles clear, let's go ahead and actually design out this page. Okay, so between cuts, I've done a few things just to speed us up a bit. You can see I've added additional styles with mobile and the name as well. So these are the same as over here just for the mobile size. And uh, let's see what else I've done. I've also done a gallery image and a logo option, one colored and one not. And this gallery image uses some of the same things. So we're actually instant swapping out the picture. And then this is a text that we can overwrite as well. All right, the other thing I've done here is I've gone ahead and clicked this little drop down and renamed this page style guide. Let's go ahead and add another page. We'll call this like layout or something like that. All right, so now that we've got this set, let's go ahead and actually design the layout. And I like to keep my styles separate just so I can kind of make sure I know where everything's at, especially as the project gets larger. I'll add an iPhone 13 and then let's change the color to this dark uh, background color. And I'll rename this to mobile design. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and expand this out and make it really long. Uh, the other thing I can do here is go ahead and add a layout grid. So let's add one here and let's set this, let's make this a white color so it's visible and 10 works fine for me. Actually, let's make this, uh, let's make this eight here and then I'm gonna add one more and this one won't be a grid, it will be a column. And here, let's also keep this to white and let's, let's go six to start with on a, on a uh, mobile device. All right, so with both of those set, I can actually come in here just like I did for my text styles and my color styles, and we can say this like mobile uh, grid or something like that. Now, I'm only ever going to use it on this one thing, so I don't know that I really need that, but, you know, just in case. So now I've got my grid styles, my color styles, and my text styles. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and start designing out this page. The very first thing I need to do is bring in an image, and it's on the other screen, so let me grab that quickly. And I'll just drag it in right here. Whoa, it's huge. <laughs> so let's uh, bring this out this way. Uh, now, uh, let's first of all get this inside of this uh, this frame. Now, even though you can't see it, it is technically inside that frame. And what I want to do is set the constraints to up top. So it always tries to stick to the top. And then I want it to set to where it stretches left and right like that. So now when I bring this in smaller, I actually bring it in like this, maybe something like that on mobile. The nice thing, though, is because I've set these constraints properly to where it tries to stay to the top and then stretches itself out. If I click on the whole frame and start to move this, you see the image just dynamically rescales. And that's exactly what I want because, of course, I want this to be dynamic as much as possible. All right, so I've got that set. Let me hit Control-G and remove that grid. Uh, and then next, let's bring in our logo. So Shift-I brings in the logo. I can just start typing, and there it is. I can hit Enter, and it drops right in. So let's drop this in the center and I can just click that and add it right to the center. Next thing is I want to add some kind of like fading background here to make sure that I can always see that. So I'm gonna hit the R tool for rectangle or you can go up here and click, that's fine too. And I'm gonna add this in up here. I don't actually have a linear gradient as one of my default colors. So let's come in here and I'm gonna click on this and change this to linear gradient. I'm only ever gonna use this here, so I'm not gonna set this up as one of my local colors, but I will go ahead and start with it that color. And what we'll end with here is this with a 0% opacity, which I think is the default anyhow. So it's basically gonna go from this color all the way down. Now, when it comes to layering things, you wanna make sure that whatever's up top is actually gonna sit over the top. So drag other things below it. So this will be the very kind of the Z index thinking about it from CSS standpoint, all the way at the top. And then these all the way as they go down have a lower Z index or stacking order. So in that sense, that's kind of the opposite of HTML. All right, I'll get that set and then I'll hit T or you can also come over here and click there and let's add uh, some text here. So first of all, we'll say unique trips uh, for adventurous travelers. 
Now you might remember from our text description earlier that I actually want to set this to a fixed width and that way when I move this it'll actually move to the middle. Next I want to set this center and then I want to set this to an auto height so it stretches out automatically. And then the next thing I need to do is come up here and grab a text style. So let's grab our heading uh, H1 except I want it to be the mobile. Nope, that's not right. Let's do uh, heading three, maybe, H-Mobile. All right, so there we are. We got that set in there now. Let's go ahead and copy this down. And I want to flip it horizontally, or vertically, rather. If I hit Command P, I can search for that. So I can say vertical, and there it is. I don't remember what these things all are, so why not just hit Command P and search for them? Same thing here. Uh, I'm not going to tie this to a kind of a global style, but I will go ahead and grab this as the dark color. And over here do the same thing except we'll set this to 0% opacity. All right, so now this is going to fade essentially from like this dark dark color all the way up um, and let's maybe space this out just a touch more. With both of these then I want to make sure that both of these constraints are set the same as that background image. So left and right stretch all the way but try to stay in the center and then with these I want these to say center and top. So in other words, if I come and stretch this, these two should stay in the very center. Everything else should stretch to try to fill the width of the screen, and that's what it does. All right, we're getting somewhere. Next, we're going to come in here, and we're going to add a button. Again, Shift-I will pull up those, and I can just start searching, arrow over, and grab that. Now, this button text here for this instance, I want to change from subtitle to subtitle small, uh, let's see, just mobile. How about that? All right, and I'll drag this to the center here. Uh, this button text itself, remember I can pass in props over here, so we'll say something like book a trip, and I am good with that default icon because that's the default icon I want. Now let's go ahead and turn back on our grid just to make sure we've got stuff lined up properly. Uh, so that mostly looks right here. Uh, this, I'm fine with that stretching basically as far as it can, and uh, we're going to use a lot of these columns more for um, for the actual images and things like that. In fact, maybe let's go ahead and switch this up just a touch. So if I click, let's see, the mobile design, that gives me access to the mobile grid here. And then let's go ahead and customize this a bit more. So I'm going to set this to 12 columns, and I think that will allow me to kind of snap stuff a little bit better. And you can see that cuts there and there. Everything is in the middle, and then we can use these as kind of the border uh, sizes over this way. All right, so let's leave that on for now. And um, then the next thing I need to do is add some text down below. So I'm going to hit T again, and we'll just type in here. And the first thing I want to do is add in what dreams are made of. Let's hold Option and drag this down. We'll add some more text, trips for explorers, drag this down again, and once more. All right, so let's switch up these styles. First of all, I want this to be subtitle small mobile. Then I'm going to change this color to green. And then this one, all right in the middle here, let's change this to H4. I think it's maybe H3. Uh, mobile and this one here will be well, let's go body and here we're going to go uh, mobile now, I do want to change a couple of these colors so let's change this color to my text color which is like a gray this one I want to make sure is set to my white I think all the rest of those are fine again if you're not sure if you hit command a you'll see anything that's selected so here this whatever it is needs to be my dark color these linear gradients don't matter because they're just one-offs uh, this one I want to be white. So I don't know which ones those were, but now I know that if I hit Command-A, everything is either set to my default colors or just these two kind of uh, random ones right here. Now, both of these, I want to make sure I don't move around anymore. So for now, I'm going to click both of those, come over here and lock them, and that way I can't select them and move them around. In fact, if I try, I'm just going to select that background, which, coming to think of it, I also want to <laughs> lock. So let's do that. All right, I'm going to uh, toggle off that grid for now. We're going to grab both of these and hit Shift A, or you can right click and do an auto layout. And in this case, I want it to be up and down, which is what it kind of guesses at. But I only want these to be like maybe five pixels apart. And right in the middle is great. Then let's go ahead and grab this. And the first thing I want to do is come here and set this to fixed width so that I can drag this and it, the text will resize. Let's see, like this right in there. Let's keep going. There we go. And I'm going to set this to center. Just like that. And now let's turn back on that grid. Let's get it all the way to the edge there and all the way to the edge there. All right, now let's grab this one and this one. And this is a kind of a nested flex box. Let's make the whole thing a flex box parent as well. 
and I think that's fine as far as spacing is concerned, but we can now adjust this as we need to. And uh, let's see, 22, I don't know what we'd set that at. Let's keep it at 22, and then we can adjust things uh, as needed. All right, cool. So I got that set, and in fact, I'm kind of thinking I'm going to adjust these grids again. That seems a little too spaced out to the side. So let me come back to this grid, and let's update this again, and let's change this to something more like 10, um, and that will get me kind of a better sizing on the side there. So what I need to do here is not select the whole parent, but just the thing that's making it the widest, which is this text frame right here. An easy way to click down into that is either to double click or keep clicking until you get down to that nested layer, or you can just command click and it will automatically select that layer. Then I'll drag it down. And again, let's select the, the parent and then move this all centrally here. And one more time, come inside here. There we go. Okay, cool. So I've got that set. The next section is very similar only that uh, it will have an image gallery as well. So let me copy this down and we'll just kind of copy and paste this text in to speed us up a bit. Off the beaten path, places without people, and whatever that says. <laughs> All right, so let's bring this in here. Let's see, this is a little wide. So um, what, can I, what I can do is select this text, come in here and set this to uh, whatever the width is, in which case I can move the actual box and it will resize, put this in the middle, and I think that should work well. Let's go ahead and move this up. And then this whole parent, I actually want some more spacing here. So let's give this some more spacing and also make sure that this auto expands, which again, the easiest way would be to come in here and make sure that the height is set to auto as well. And now I actually don't need to reset this. I can just leave this at my 22. All right, cool. So I got that set as well. I've also got some buttons down below here, uh, the arrows. So I'll search for arrows. There they are. And uh, this can be part of that same thing. It can be spaced out evenly there. That should work. I'm going to copy and paste those and then grab both of these and hit Shift A to make those an auto layout, except this time I want the direction to be row rather than column. I'll set these in the middle and then uh, let's set these to more like 10 apart. All right, now this is where I can set these variants. So let's see, I want this first one to be disabled. And then for the arrow, uh, I want this to be arrow left. I think the rest of that looks fine. Uh, let me toggle off that grid. So the first image will already be here, so they shouldn't be able to go left. They'll only be able to go right, and that's what I want to demonstrate. Next, Shift-I again, or you can go to your Assets panel either way. I'm going to grab this one right here. This is my image, and fit this in below. In fact, I think I can just add this directly to this frame. So let's do that. Um, and in this case, I actually want it to be below all this. Now, as we keep adding stuff, you can see that I'm starting to get kind of messy in this sidebar. So let's come up top here and add some um, some some names to things. So I'm going to call this logo. That's fine. Um, let's grab everything here, including these three. So how about all that? And I can now hit Command G and group all of those. That doesn't do anything layout wise. It just kind of holds them in the sidebar. And I'll call this something like a header. All right. And then this right here. Uh, all of this together, we'll call this gallery. That's the second main section here. All right, now all this is stretching out to fit this section here. So let me go ahead and just pull this in. And as I change this, the parent responds to the size of its children, just like Flexbox would. Toggle back on that just to make sure I'm aligning well, which I am, which is great. And the other thing I'm going to do is actually make this a little bit smaller. Uh, and in this case, let's see, let's also use something special we can do with auto layout. Um, the new auto layout allows you to add absolute positioned elements. So I can click this and it's still within this grid container, but I can actually move it freely now and it doesn't affect anything else. The reason that's important is I actually want to add the other images next to this. So if I drag this out like this, and now both of these together, I'm going to hit shift A and they set these up as their own little frame. Right now it's outside of everything. We'll fit that, fix that in a second. So we'll say gallery uh, images. And in this case, I want to switch out this image for another image. And uh, let's call this something like, I can either click here, I guess, or come over here and pass this in. We'll call this like uh, Aurora sound. And uh, again, duplicate this again, change out the image, and I can change this to something else like cool stuff. <laughs> All right, or whatever. Now notice here that as I type, uh, I just noticed that it's actually kind of pulling to the center. And again, that has to do everything to do with the constraints. So let's go 
jump back over to our style guide or the easiest way is to click on an instance and then click, uh, let's see, this right here, which will jump us back to this uh, section. Now here, I actually want it to stay stuck to the left side as I change that. Um, and let's see, move it over this way too. I think that should fix it. Let's come back over here. What happens if we start typing again? Yeah, it stays on the left side. That's what I want. All right, so I've got all this set. I'm not gonna add all of them because you kind of get the point, <laughs> but we are gonna stack them out and I want them to be spaced out pretty evenly here. So um, let's grab this master layout here. And it looks like that's the image. So let's drag that inside of it. All right, that's, that's fine. The cool stuff is first. Actually, maybe let's move it down just so it looks a little bit better. We've got all those set. Now with all these and this master selected, I can expand this so that they're spaced out a little more evenly and uh, we clip them off there. In fact, maybe let's just make these slightly bigger themselves and that way we can space those out right on that grid line. Come back here, here select this, we'll pull that in. Now they should be spaced out that same kind of grid area right there and uh, that way you can kind of tell there's something beyond it. Now let me grab this and pull this inside and you can see it clips it automatically. If I come up here and click, you can change that to where it doesn't clip it. You can see overflow, but all I want to do is make it look like it will on mobile. So let's go ahead and leave it clipped. And that way, this is exactly what it will look like on mobile. Let, let's remove that grid. And now you can see it kind of hints that there's something else this way. But of course, this is disabled going the other way. All right, cool. Um, the other thing I want to do is make sure that this stays uh, left, which is good. And then up top, that's fine. This here, this I want to stay. Um, see, right now, we'll just keep this at center. And we'll do the same thing here, although we, we will probably update this in a bit. All right, let's go ahead and grab this mobile design and drag it down. Because we've got a couple other things to add. First of all, we've got this whole section. Let me drag this down here. And this is going to be very similar. Here we'll say a globe of possibilities, happy travelers all over the world, and whatever that says. Uh, this again is an auto expanding, so let's click this to make sure it takes up the full auto height. And then I don't need these, so we can delete that. Now, just below here, I'm going to have another image. And let me drag this in from off screen. It's this map image. If I hold Shift and I click this arrow, this corner, it will actually drag down and stay scaled the exact same way. Let me show my grid items again. And I'll go ahead and line up with my grid lines here. There we go. Let's grab both these and hit Shift A. And that way, it's an auto layout as well. I'll put it in the middle. And let's call this something like uh, map. I noticed that these gallery images are outside of this, so let's make sure we add this inside that frame here. And then I'll drag this down to the bottom, and then let's drag this map in as well. All right, so there we go. All right, so you'll notice now we've got these kind of three master sections. All right, now there's something I forgot down this way, and that is that we're going to have three little kind of sections down below here. So let's see, I think the easiest thing might be to actually create this separately and then we'll add it back in up top. So let's say something like 24K plus, and in this case, I wanna come over here again, and I'm gonna set this to auto width and auto height, and that way it kind of collapses that text box around it. And we're gonna change this. Uh, let's go mobile four, I think that should work. And again, let me make sure that that is auto width, and we'll come in here and set this to that accent color. And then just below here, uh, let's go ahead and say travelers and here I want this to be my muted color and I'll make this uh, body and uh, I think just body mobile should work now what I'm going to do is stack these up like this hit shift a and then make sure that these are in the middle and then I'll just copy this over a few times with holding alt or option and then let's update this text all right all three of those then together will then be nested as well inside another auto layout and again, I'm going to pull these out. And in this case, what I want to do is come over here to this auto layout, click here and make sure that it's set to space between, and then I'll set them to the center. Now, what that means is as I expand this whole thing, they will actually try to stay away from each other. And this will be auto set, which is perfect. And then I'm going to drag this in up here. Let's see. And let's actually get it all the way inside that one and then set this to a little bit more. We'll do like something like 50. And of course, you'd want some kind of precision to figure out exactly what you want these to be. Uh, that looks a little bit too big for me, maybe 45. All right, 
circle. So now we've got that set with these three little kind of sections, again, nested inside of nested inside of nested Flexbox containers. But if you're a web developer, you're used to that kind of nesting. All right, now it's time to have our signup section below. So let's actually, let's just copy this and uh, we'll change this up to say something like, it's time to explore, get hidden locations. And then let's also copy this down and drag it in right here. Get it to snap inside that flex box container, auto layout, same thing. And then uh, actually, no, it's not because of what I want it is like this. There we go. And then uh, whatever this is apart. And if you ever select something and then hold down the option key, it'll actually tell you the distance. So that's 22 pixels. So let's do the same thing, holding command and scrolling in. Let's me do that. And I can just pull this to 22 pixels. All right, so what I want is I'm gonna want a little pill shape here and this will be my form. So let's go ahead and add that. I'm gonna come up here and click this rectangle, drag this out. We'll set this to something like 200. And uh, the fill will be set to my dark color. The stroke will be set to this. And I'll leave it right like that. Let's turn on those grids again with uh, option G, spread it all the way out. And then what I want is some filler text. So I'm gonna copy this down. And this will say something like email address. To get it up top, I can just select the whole box and hit the right bracket. And let's see, I need another S. And then I'm gonna make sure that it's set to auto width. And I've got some random spacing here. So let's get rid of that. Cool, and we'll drag it all the way over here. Now, the other thing I want over here is a button that's gonna say sign up or something like that. So I'm gonna, Look for my buttons again with Shift-I, or again, you can go to the Assets panel, grab that text that is Monster, <laughs> and change this to Subtitle. And in this case, what I want is Mobile, since we're on mobile. And I want to change this text over here to say Sign Up. And I do want an icon, but I want to change it up. So let's look at, see if we have like a mail or something like that. Let's go back uh, right here. So I'll select that one and we'll drag it in down this way. And in fact, that still looks a little bit too big for me. Um, let's see how I should do this on mobile. I think it should still work. I should be able to, to do that, but maybe I need to actually resize it. Now, I'm not gonna change the master. I'm just gonna change this individual instance. So let's do something like 15 and like 10. Maybe that's a little too, too aggressive, maybe 18, 10. And again, you'd probably want some kind of design system that's fully realized uh, to tell you exactly what to do here, but I think I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, we'll also come in here and maybe we'll go to our a subtitle small. Now nah, that's too small. So in this case, what I might do is either adjust that or I can detach the instance and just change this to like 20. It's kind of a unique scenario where I'm trying to stack everything uh, side to side. So let's do that. I'm gonna grab both of these and hit Shift A to make them an auto layout, automatically putting them in the middle. Let's make sure that they are spaced between so that as I spread them out, they will actually try to stay away from each other as much as possible. And then uh, let's do it just like that. I think that looks just about right. Let's see, this has, this whole thing is an auto layout. So what I should do is actually make this whole thing have the fill. So that's what we'll do. And then we'll give it the whole thing a stroke as well and set the border radius on this instead so I don't have to have an extra one. It's like stacking divs for no reason. Uh, then I can also come in here and set this to like five, maybe. And same thing here. It's a little too much, but you can see now I don't have to worry about spacing that all out. I just let the auto layout do it. Um, now in this case, you see that I have some weird spacing here. So what I can do is since I want a little bit more space on this side, let's first of all come over here and I'm gonna detach this as well since it's kind of a unique scenario. Set that to 14. And then what I'm gonna do is on this auto layout, I'm gonna to try to set all these separately. So let's set this left one to something like 10, maybe even something like 15. And that way only this one is off the side and basically I'm setting dynamic values for all that. Now I can stretch this out and uh, that looks great. All right, let me turn off that. And you can see we did a bunch of custom stuff there, but it doesn't actually affect the master button. It doesn't affect these text styles at all. I'm basically just looking at this instance and changing it up as I want to. All right, we're getting dangerously close. I've got one section down here. Let me go ahead and hit P for the pen tool. Click over here, and then I'm gonna hold shift to make sure I get a straight line and click again. And then let's change this stroke 
uh, to something like that. And I think that should work. Oh, hit V to go back here, or you can come up here and click V to go back to the move tool. All right, let's come down here and let's add with Shift I another uh, logo. Where's that at? There we go. All right, dropped it way up top there. And uh, let's go ahead and change this up to not monochrome. I'm gonna copy this down here and I'll paste in some text about our brand and make sure that it lines up perfectly, which it does, cool. And then below here, we're gonna have three kind of sub sections for the footer. Uh, so first of all, let's copy this down. I'm gonna grab these together and hit Shift A to make those an auto layout. Before we get going too far, let me make sure I do what I always forget to do, which is to name these things so I can find them later. So let's connect all of this here with a Shift A and we'll call this uh, like CTA or something like that. We create unique experience. This is just doing its own thing. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, we'll grab all this here. And for now, let's hit Command G to make this a group and we'll call this footer. All right, so inside here, now I've got that, this random text and this frame. So we will eventually kind of connect all these together. But for now, let's go ahead and grab this and I'm gonna call this about. And in this case, again, I'm gonna make sure that this is set to auto width. And I'm gonna change this to like a four maybe and change this text style to white. And let's grab this and I'm gonna hit Shift A, even though it's its own little section here. What I'm doing is allowing myself to add a bottom border. And this is another kind of newish feature in Figma. I can go ahead and grab that. And in this case, I'm gonna grab this and just say, hey, I just want it on the bottom. And let's set it to like, I don't know, three. All right, that looks great. Let's grab this and actually let's copy this one down because I want it to be that color and that size. So let's not do more work than we have to. Paste that in. And then in this case, I also wanna make sure that I set this to auto width. And so that will say about us. Let's copy this down a few more times and I'll update all these and then we'll figure out spacing. All right, so that locations is gonna be one of those new ones. So let's hit Shift A here and we'll get all those stacked up together. Let's set that about 18 apart and grab, let's see this one and this one, hit Shift A one more time and we'll keep all those apart as well. All right, so maybe let's go ahead and copy this down and let me get rid of this locations. We'll call this a locations and those are all stuck to the center, which is cool. Uh, all these then also need to make sure that we got these set to the center horizontally so that as they adjust and stuff, they stay in the center. And we'll snap them there. All right, so these locations, let's go ahead and add these one after the other. I've just grabbed continents essentially. So let's grab these and we'll copy and paste these uh, a little bit more at a time. North America, South America. I think that's all we've got. Let's copy this down one more time for the final section. All right, and I think that's all I've got. All right, so if I zoom out, let me remove that uh, grid lines. Let's get these all in the center. And if I zoom out, then we are basically done. This is what we're looking at right here. Now this I'm noticing is pushing these off. So let's make sure I set this to absolute position and that way I can snap it off that way. And that's what I want it to look like. I think the rest of that looks pretty good overall. There are a couple of things we might end up tweaking, but you can see how once you set up that design kind of system, it's really quick and easy to build out a page that actually works. Let me now grab this and push it up, and that way we've got our mobile design set and ready. All right, with the mobile design, let's go ahead and copy this out, and uh, let's expand this a good bit, and we'll see how much we forgot to add that uh, the, the centering that we needed to, this constraints. So like here, it's definitely gonna stay to the left where really what I want it to do is to stay to the center. So that's one where I know we've probably messed it up. Let's go ahead and come over here though, and we'll call this desktop like that. And let's drag this out to like 1500. So you can see here, the ones that we set to the center work great. The ones that we didn't do not work great, but that's not its fault, that's our fault. So <laughs> we'll pull this over and uh, that's a little too wide. Let's go something like maybe uh, 1960 pixels, that works for me. So we've got a few things we need to adjust here. Uh, you can see we've got to change this. Let's change this to like an H3, maybe just an H1. What does the H1 header text look like? There we go. Drag this out. I think that is doable. That might be a little bit too big. Uh, H2, set it to that in the middle. Okay, perfect. That's fine there. Let's see, we've got this background uh, image that we probably locked still. Yep, here it is. So let's go ahead and unlock this for a second and make sure that it's moved all the way up top. And then I'll stretch it down a touch. Um, 
And we'll do the same thing here where this stays connected to that. Let's also then move this down just a touch. This was never moved anywhere. It's just left and sent top. So I want this actually in the center, which means I need to move it down this way. Let's do that. And then we'll move all these things out of here. All right, cool. Let's move this down here to book a trip. And those should work just fine. Now let's go ahead and kind of expand out how we want these to look. So I'm going to come in here and change this up to a subtitle. And this again will just be my desktop version like that. Uh, these also need to be all switched as well. So let me do that. And then let's change this text up as well. So this will be an H3. And same thing here, this will be an H3. And without belaboring the point, I'll just uh, assume you know how to change all the rest of those to H3s. But let's come up here to our body. And again, this is, now you can see it's, I've got it set to a fixed width and the height is kind of all wonky because of that. So let's come in here and now that I've got that text selected, I'll come in here and set this to auto height. And then I'm gonna set this as well to just expand the whole section. All right, so here we go. Let's get this a little bit wider, um, something like that. And let's drag this whole section down. So I've grabbed this parent container. We'll just move it down and set this book a trip right above it. Something like that. All right, now the rest of this section, let's actually, let's work on maybe the footer next. I think that might be the easiest. I've got these all set together and they're all set in their own little frames. What I can do is you might think I could do this but then that's just individually because they're not yet in an auto layout. So what I need to do is hit Shift A, and now I can set them side by side. Let's also come over here and make sure they're spaced between. And that way, as I control the parent, they'll all space out. The other thing I want to do is make sure that they're set to the top. And then internally here for each of these, I want to make sure that these are set to the side. And the same thing here. All right, cool. So that's all set up. Let's then bring this down this way. I never really finished setting up that footer properly as far as grouping everything properly, but I think if we do it now, that should still work. I'll move this over to the side. Uh, same thing here, except we just want to push this left. And then let's add this to this section as well. Uh, or maybe let's not. Let's do it like this and do a new auto layout. Make sure it's at the top. Come up here and make sure that it's spaced between. Now, as we move this in and out, it will basically keep them as spread apart as possible, which is what we want. All right, and now uh, let me make sure that this is set left and right uh, to center. And that way, it, even if I were to expand this further, it would just stay right in the center, which is what we would want. Now, again, I would need to change all this text size to match the current text size. I would want to come into all of these as well, make sure I set these horizontal paddings to zero. And that way, because it's not centered, it would actually just be under the text, which is what I would want to see. I'd need to do that, update all the text sizes there as well. But for your sake, I won't go through all of that. Uh, next, I'll come in here, expand this out a good bit. Again, I would need to change the text size here. So let's expand that out. And then let's go ahead and move this whole parent here, the sign up form all the way out. And because we've made that responsive, um, it'll actually drag out as well with us, which is what we want. I'm trying to move this, but you can see that it's actually a child of this flex parent. So again, that's where that kind of thinking is really important because now I can just snap this in the middle, realizing that it's the parent that controls that. Same thing here. This is all uh, set up in a flex container. We're just gonna switch it to row or column, and then let's drag this over this way. And the same thing would go here. We'd wanna expand all this out. This is gonna be left aligned. And same thing with all this. This is gonna be left aligned as well. And this needs to be set to the left. And then we've got just this one little section left. This is gonna be very much the same, except all this is gonna be snapped this way. This will be brought in underneath here, and then we'll spread this out using space between and grab the parent container and kind of move it like that. This whole thing, we'll need to make sure that if we were to add several more of these, which I haven't done yet, but I could just copy and paste, I guess, like that, they would then snap out that way, which is what I'd want. So it looks, it's gonna look something like that. Now there's one other thing I want to add to the desktop design, but let's first of all left align all of these and then make sure I grab the parent here, push them all to the left and we'll expand this out a bit. Same thing here. And we'll give this a little bit more space. These two should be then grouped and this will be only five and that way they stay close. Okay, so that's mostly there. We'd obviously have to change up 
uh, text sizes throughout the document to make everything work for desktop. But you can see how if you do some of the hard work on mobile, it's not too difficult to get it to look good on desktop. Now, if you know of a way to dynamically size fonts so that they change with the viewport width in Figma, let me know because that would be awesome. But uh, so far as I know, that is not the case. The other thing I want to add is I want to come over here and add a rectangle. So I'll hit the R key, just drag right over here. And what I want is this very faint uh, color in the background. And I'm going to go ahead and hold Command and then just move this back slowly till it gets just behind that text. And we'll do the same thing. Let's see, let's pull it more like that. And then I'll copy it. We'll do the same thing down here. So I'm going to add it right in here. And then I'm going to make sure that it's absolute positioned since that didn't work as well as the other one. And we'll do the same thing here where we'll just kind of cap it to just this section perhaps right here. Well, if you're interested in more design stuff, I do most of my designs with actual like real life coding situations. I don't consider myself a great designer or even a designer. I barely consider myself a web developer, um, but I do think that uh, I've taken some time to, to kind of explore how these things work and I hope it can be a big help to you. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that there was going to be a surprise if you waited all the way to the end. And here's the surprise. I'm actually coding this entire thing out uh, right now on the Net Ninjas channel. So if you want to see what this looks like, go ahead and head right over there. In fact, if you want a preview, here's what it looks like. You can see here I've got like a parallax effect that as we scroll, all this stuff comes in. We've got these things fading in. We've got an image gallery with this kind of floating hover state, which is really cool. It actually figures out when the last one is on the, the viewport. And then you've got everything we just looked at set and ready to go. I can even come in here and do like hi at sample.com and then it will pretend to send it and give me a thank you message. So this is what I'm coding out right now on the NetNinjas channel. And if you're interested in kind of taking this project all the way, jump over there. I'll try to remember to add a link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was a big help to you to both see the principles kind of outlined at the beginning and then to kind of see them played out in real life. Well, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.